Hey everybody, John with OWL. Welcome to part two on our differential or locking differential series. And today we're gonna to be talking about differentials. Why do they exist? Why do we even have them on vehicles? Why is a locking differential used in off-road and why is it uh, preferred to get you unstuck and why can't you just kind of turn it on and leave it on all the time? Well, it comes down to uh, some pretty simple things that once we go through on this video, I think you'll understand. If you want to learn more uh, about differentials and how they work, way more than you ever wanted to know, there's a fantastic video out there. Let me get the name of it. It is how differential steering works. It was made in 1937. It's fantastic. It's on YouTube. It's black and white. You can learn way more than you'll ever learn from me. But suffice it to say, the differentials are incredibly complex. I'm not going to go through all of the uh, inner workings of the gears of a differential, but let's talk about the simple differences between an open differential, a solid axle, a locker, etc. Well, I think a good place to start is with uh, where cars started. And it turns out that when vehicles started, and I've got a couple of land cruisers here to use as examples, when vehicles started, you didn't have rear wheel drive and front wheel drive, you had one wheel drive. It means that only a single rear wheel was driven. And when only a single rear wheel is driven, a differential is unnecessary because you don't need to distribute power from the engine. So you can kind of see it here. Vehicles have engines, and then they have right here drive shafts or uh, prop shafts, as they call in the UK from boats. They go down here and they turn uh, that engine, uh, the rotation of the engine, into forward force by turning the wheels. Now, originally, like I said, vehicles only turned one wheel. Now, why does that make a differential irrelevant? Well, because when a vehicle is cornering, the wheels are actually traveling different distances. And this is a key concept to get. And the best way to explain this, or the best way that I think to visualize this, is anytime you've watched track and field. Think of the Olympics. Let me show you this little uh, pathetic attempt at a drawing I did on my whiteboard here. All right, so here you have your standard, poorly drawn high school running track, or let's say it's the Olympic track. Now. If this is your finish line, have you ever noticed how in shorter races, the starting lines are staggered? Now, why is that? Well, because the person starting here, person A, this distance all the way around to the finish line is going to be much shorter than this person, uh, sorry, this would be person C, this would be person B. So if this person started at the same spot here, they would have to travel much further. Well, it's the same is true about the wheels on a car. If you have a corner, right, your inner wheel on that car, right, and then you have your axle shaft, then you have your outer wheel. As these wheels travel around the corner, to get to the same spot, this wheel is traveling much further than this wheel. What does that mean? Well, it means that you can't have this solid because one wheel either has to slip or this has to break because you can't have one wheel traveling at a different speed of another wheel if this is a solid tube. Hence the reason, as I put my pen away, most vehicles have open differentials. Now what do open differentials mean? Well, that means that the wheels, and I will give you an example here by turning this FJ60 toy upside down. Now this, let me try to prop this up again so I can use my hands. Okay, so on this FJ60, and again, this is just a toy, you can see, this is not mimicking real life, but just on this toy, that as I turn this wheel, Nothing is happening to this wheel over here. In fact, I can put my finger on it to show you. I put my finger on top of it, I turn this wheel, nothing is happening. Now this is what's gonna happen in your Mercedes Sprinter van right now. As the engine drives one wheel, if one wheel is stuck, it will continue to drive only a single wheel. Now, on a solid axle vehicle, which you really wouldn't find, but for the sake of this demonstration, this toy has a solid axle. If I put my finger on this 
tire and I start to turn this one. Look at that. I can't turn one wheel independently. This is a solid axle. Now, a solid axle is actually exactly the same thing as a locked differential. Because what a locked differential does is it essentially turns this into one solid axle. Now, why would you want that? Well, we just talked about on the board, right? We just talked about how the wheels have to be able to travel, the wheels have to be able to travel at different distances. God, I cannot get this camera right. The wheels have to be able to travel at different distances to go around a corner. Now, this is why you wouldn't want a solid axle setup or to leave your locker on when you're driving on the street. Now, the reason you can have your locker on on the dirt is because a wheel can slip, but realistically, you only wanna turn your locker on when you want traction. Now, how can a locker help you with traction? Well, let's go back to our toys. So if we come down here to our toys again, let's pretend you get a wheel in the air, which because sprinter vans don't flex, you are very prone to do. Those of you who don't under turn, uh, understand the term flex, Flex is basically the ability of the suspension to articulate and keep tires uh, on the ground. And so if this uh, toy had a great deal of flex, like some um, RC cars, this whole back area would flex and you would keep these tires flat on the ground, allowing for traction. Sprinter vans, very little flex. So this toy is a good uh, mimic of that. Now let's say you've gone up on a rock, all right? So this is our sprinter van, we're up on a rock and we're trying to drive forward. Let's say we're only powering our rear wheels. Now we're trying to drive forward, but the engine is only going to power the wheel with the least amount of traction. And so what's happening here is as we spin this wheel, nothing is happening to the model car. It's not going anywhere. Our sprinter van is stuck. But let's try the same thing with a sprinter van with a locked locker, or essentially turning your uh, open differential into a solid axle. Now, if you get this uh, FJ40 up on this obstacle, and now I start to turn apply power, the whole thing moves forward. Why? Because you can't move one wheel without the other. So as the engine applies power to one wheel, it's equally distributed 50-50, and it moves you forward over the obstacle. So, in a nutshell, what a locking differential does is it turns a vehicle where the wheels in the rear can spin independently and it makes them so that they turn as a single unit. This can drastically improve traction when you're in snow, mud, sand, rocks. Uh, anytime that one wheel is going to have more traction than another wheel or anytime that one wheel is in the air and one wheel is on the ground, that is where locking differentials really, really perform. It's also the reason we don't turn a locker on and leave it on uh, and drive around the street. In fact, anyone that's ever experienced having um, uh, a four-wheel drive vehicle locked and trying to turn in a parking lot, you'll hear it go, oh, 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 oh. you'll hear the wheels hopping because what's happening is um, you're having to, because the axle is solid, that tire is actually skipping on the pavement. It's not terribly good for your vehicle, so that's why we don't wanna have the locker engaged the whole time. I know I went through a lot there, and maybe it's a little bit too nerdy for many of you, but hopefully uh, you understand more about differentials. There's also things called limited slip differentials, which basically are, are meant to uh, engage when uh, it senses that you're losing traction in one wheel and they work well, but not nearly as good as a locker. And then uh, anyway, there's lots of different uh, iterations of these things, but for the purposes of understanding why you may want uh, to upgrade your axle in your sprinter van, I thought it was important to walk through the difference between how your sprinter van is set up for the factory and what an upgraded locker with an Eaton uh, e-locker could do for you on the trails. So I hope you found that informative. And again, if you wanna learn more, uh, check out that video I mentioned earlier online. It's just classic Americana and it goes through all the old engineering. It's a great watch. Uh, thanks again.